Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com and today we're going to take a look on the inside of this radiator. Now I could probably look it up on the internet, but when I was a kid we didn't have the internet. That makes me sound really old, I know. But uh, what we would do is take things apart, check it out for ourselves, look on the inside. So that's exactly what I've done. I've cut this radiator up into pieces and I'm going to show you what's on the inside. But first, check out my website, bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube and the boring stuff. We have cool products like flux capacitors, muffler bearings, and other essentials. And we also have t-shirts, hats, and discount coupons codes for anything you could possibly want. So check it out, bleepinjeep.com. Don't forget to subscribe as well and check out the Facebook page. All right, let's get started. All right, so this is a radiator for an automatic vehicle. The way you can tell is it's got two transmission lines that run right here. Uh, one goes in and one comes out. I've got a lot of questions over the years about uh, what happens to that transmission fluid once it goes inside the radiator and I didn't really know for sure so uh, today we're going to take a look at what happens in here. I've also cut apart both sides and we'll look at the cores as well. Alright so let's start right here. This is an older radiator. It looks like it's made out of copper and brass. Right here I've cut a cross section and you can see this is a three core radiator. How do you tell? Well, a one core radiator would just have one pipe running right through here, a larger pipe. This is a three core, three core, and it has three separate pipes. Now just because it's a three core or a four core doesn't mean it's got uh, more cooling power because those cores could be smaller. You could have a 24 core, a little tiny, uh, straws in there and it not move a lot of fluid. So having a one core or a three core doesn't really tell you much. What you need to know is how large these cores are. And um, inside of those cores uh, the, the uh, fluid flows from this end. This is the hot end and it pushes through here. I'll show you that in a second. And then it comes through these cores and in between those cores are these little copper corrugated pieces and what that does is help to cool it off. Let me show you what that looks like. It's got these little uh, slits in it like little little fan blades or something. It's kind of neat. Alright so let me turn this around here. Now like I said this is the hot side coming in from the engine and there's your cores. All that water the water comes through right here, it's being pushed by your water pump and then it goes through all of the cores. As you can see it's kind of dirty in here. Let me show you what I actually found. When I opened it up, I actually found all these little, uh, I guess those are some kind of berries or something in there. I don't know how those got in there, but um, maybe it was because I had this stored in the attic for a while, a mouse or something might have come in there so that just means if you're going to store these things you probably want to plug up the holes because that wouldn't work very well with all of those berries in there. Anyhow, so that's what that side looks like. The water flows through, comes through these cores, goes through, and we'll look at the other side. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the cold side. I went ahead and cut this real quick so that I could turn it towards you. Now this is uh, where the radiator cap is, where you put the fluid in. Um, but it's also the cold side because once the water flows through that side, gets to this side, it's going to be a little cooler. And it's going to flow back out into your engine, cooler, and then recirculate through. Now this side looks a little different from the other side. It's basically the same behind this pipe. There's the cores that you can, I don't know if you can make those out back there. And um, But in front of that is this. It's the transmission cooler. And I didn't really understand how this worked at first, but if you look at it, um, this is hollow all the way through to the bottom. And the transmission fluid comes in this little hole here and it goes into this pipe but the pipe uh, has an interior to it if you can see right there I just barely nicked the edge of that pipe and it's like two pipes in one that are soldered on the top and the bottom or enclosed on the top and bottom and so 
the fluid is just contained within that pipe. Um, people have asked me, how does the transmission fluid not uh, get into uh, the coolant? And that's because it's all contained in this little pipe and it doesn't mix. Um, but it does get cooled. I'm not sure how well it gets cooled. That's why a lot of people add an extra transmission cooler. But uh, the coolant does flow through this cool side of the radiator gets a little bit cooler and then flows back out to your transmission. Alright, so that's pretty much it. That's all there is to a radiator. You got your hot side, you got your cold side, you got your transmission cooler, you got your cores, and you have your radiator fence. Simple as that. Who knew? Check out my website, bleepingjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff. We also have hats and t-shirts, uh, discount coupon codes, and flux capacitors, muffler bearings. So check it out, bleepinjeep.com. Don't forget to subscribe as well and check out the Facebook page. Alright, 